Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, we just want to take a, a little bit of an opportunity to unveil some of the plans that we have uh, for this upcoming session. We saw that the, the Democrats' single party control last year has really damaged Minnesota. Democrats pursued a very divisive legislative session uh, to appease really their far left base, leaving a lot of Minnesotans behind and making a mess of the state all along the way. The state budget is in trouble, schools are crushed under the new mandates, and Minnesotans have less money in their pockets. This year, Republicans are going to work to repair that damage from all the Democrat control done by the auto control spending, by all their mandates that they put on everything from uh, schools to businesses, and securing bonding that will focus on the core needs of this state. We've already seen a few of those repairs go by. Uh, the repair to the SRO bill is moving forward, and we have Senator Duckworth here for uh, questions later on. We've also passed a partial tax repair bill last week. But these are just two uh, issues and a host of other issues that we need to be addressing. Senator Rarick is here today to talk a little bit about some of the repairs to the 23 education bill. And Senator Housley will be talking about some of the repairs to the bonding process. First, I just want to briefly touch on one issue that the tax repair bill missed last week, and that is the net operating loss uh, charge and subtraction. So uh, this is going to impact a lot of our small businesses, our, our small mom and pop shops around the state. That means that small businesses are gonna be paying $15 million more than they expected paying. After raising taxes on Minnesotans by $10 billion last year, it's clear Democrats are just not interested in reducing taxes on hardworking Minnesotans. That's the repair we're going to pursue this session. So right now I'd like to turn over the podium to Senator Rarick to talk a little bit about some of the repairs that we're going to be doing to the education bill from last year. Senator Rarick. Good morning, Senator Jason Rarick, and I'm the lead Republican on the Education Finance Committee. As we started seeing the education bills uh, come together last year, we also started hearing from superintendents, school boards, principals, and teachers across the state um, letting us know that the historic money being floated around was simply not enough to cover all that the mandates and requirements that were going to come with it. And they weren't addressing the priorities of our schools. Schools across the state have pursued higher local property taxes because their budgets have been busted by the layers of unfunded mandates. According to one report, up to half of the 2.2 billion dollars that was increased in education spending was earmarked for as many as 65 new mandates. The number of mandates and strings attached to last year's fundings has put schools in a tough spot. Many schools are seeing red on their bottom lines. We know every school has their own unique needs and services, and a one-size-fits-all approach doesn't work. We are proposing that we keep the 2023 funding levels, but remove the mandates to allow the schools to make locally driven decisions about what is best for their students and staff. One example I'll share is the student support personnel aid that we passed. This funding can only be used to hire new counselors with specific licensing. If a school cannot get anyone to apply with that licensure, that funding goes back to the state. We propose that that school should be able to keep that funding and use it in the way that they see would best work to improve things in their school. Um, that is uh, just one example, and I can answer questions if you have uh, questions on other of the proposals. Thank you. Senator Karin Housley, and now we're on to bonding. Uh, as many of you know, this year is traditionally a bonding year, uh, but let's remember that last year's bonding bill was $2.6 billion. It was the largest in our state's history. Uh, and the state has essentially maxed out our credit card according to the December forecast. Uh, we will see what the forecast shows tomorrow, but we're very concerned about the overall debt of our state 
a bonding bill this year has to be much more modest and focused on our core infrastructure, safe roads, safe bridges, and clean water. Uh, for years, we've heard how great the need is when it comes to infrastructure in our state, but yet last year, they spent over $1 billion on politically aligned special interest groups. Uh, that's not what bonding is for. Our caucus has discussed a bonding bill, and we're very open to doing one, but we are going to repair the bonding process by sticking together for a modest bill uh, that only includes what I said previously, core infrastructure, safe roads, bridges, and clean water. Um, secondly, last year, the bonding bill was rushed along with many other bills, as we're seeing many of them come to the floor uh, needing fixes, the earliest one, the tax bill this last week. It was a, it was a pretty sloppy session with very large, spendy bills being rushed through, which now need to be fixed, and the bonding bill is one of them. Uh, mistakes were made, and organizations right now, cities, counties, they're, all, they're not able to get their money. Their funds that were allocated in last year's bill, because of the mistakes that were made uh, in drafting, they're not getting their money. And these mistakes that were made are not the fault of the nonpartisan staff. They had stacks of, of language that needed to be done yesterday being rushed through. Uh, this, was a, this is the fault of the process that happened last year. Things were way too rushed and went way too fast. So all four caucuses have agreed to do a repair bill uh, for our bonding bill to fix it so those organizations can get money, get the money that's due to them that was voted on last year. Uh, we think we're gonna do this earlier rather than later, probably early March, middle of March maybe for the Senate, um, and get that money out to those folks ASAP. Uh, but again, for the bigger bonding bill, that's gonna come much later in session if agreed upon, and again, it's gonna have to stick to the core infrastructure and clean water. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senators Carnan and Rarick. Appreciate that. As you can see, Democrats rushed through many bills last year, but questions linger about the quality and potential negative impacts of some of these measures. We need to fully repair the tax mistakes from last year, give schools more flexibility, to repair their budgets, repair the bonding process to protect taxpayers from more debt. And we'll soon have proposals to repair things such as energy, childcare, transportation, and other areas important to Minnesotans. So stay tuned. The whole point of the repair agenda is to make life more affordable for families, curb government spending, and reduce the burden on taxpayers. With that, we are open to any questions. What is the max? said 2.6 billion, maxing out the credit card, that sort of thing, uh, last year. But I mean, this year, what, you know, what does that look like? Sure, I, I don't think we're gonna be looking at a $2.6 billion bill uh, this year again. Uh, so, you know, the number has been floated, you know, up to $830 million, but it really depends on what the forecast has to say on Thursday, what our credit limit's gonna be, but also the substance of the bill. What is it that we're actually investing in? as a state legislature in our state. And that, again, that goes back to Senator Housley's point. This, this has to be things that are important to Minnesotans, not fluffy projects that are, that are you know, our friends or whatever. So it, it's gotta be things that all Minnesotans can use. Would it, as a caucus, a bill with any special interest groups make it, you know, pass the floor? Well, I, th I mean, I think what we're going to be looking at is simply <coughs> roads, bridges, wastewater, clean drinking water. Those are the things that really we need to be pursuing. Can you give a couple of examples um, from last year? You said over a billion dollars. And can you give a couple of examples of what you considered waste in that bill? Um, I, I don't consider it waste. It's just not what the purpose of the bonding bill is supposed to be for. It is supposed to be for infrastructure, roads, and bridges, and water. And there were so many, um, again, politically aligned special interest groups, and I don't want to call them out because they're all very worthy organizations, uh, and they had great pitches, but that's not where the dollars are supposed to go to in a bonding bill. And so this year, um, somebody asked uh, if there is any special interest groups in there that are asking for money. And I, we've even talked about it as our own caucus because on the tour we did stop at, at some of these uh, places along the way. They were on the, on the um, calendar. 
but it's going to be a very, very hard sell um, with our caucus to vote for anything that isn't sticking to those parameters of roads and bridges and water. Last year, you guys put nursing homes into the bonding bill, and this year I've heard some members of your caucus suggest that maybe EMS funding could go into the bonding bill. Is that a consideration? Um, you know, the nursing went, the nursing homes funding, the $300 million for nursing homes went in because Governor Walls absolutely refused to fund nursing homes, and it was extremely disappointing for not just us, but for everybody in the state of Minnesota. I can't tell you uh, more often and, and uh, than not when I'm out in the community, people are thanking us for the funding that we gave to nursing homes, because that was huge. And we were not going to pass a bonding bill and forget about our nursing homes and our senior living facilities. So that's one of those things that you never know what's going to come up in the end. If it's EMS, I have no idea at this point. Um, but. I do know that in order for our caucus to get on board, it better be sticking to those those core um, beliefs. That but the, so it sounds like you're, you're open to the EMS. I, you know what, I'm not going to say what I'm open to or not open to. I just know our caucus has made it pretty clear with me they are not going to vote for a bonding bill unless it, it sticks to roads and bridges and water. If you're sticking to those core areas, is there room for local projects in this? I think that was one of the things that was disappointing in the governor's bill is he only allotted for $40 million for local projects. We were actually out on tour um, when, that, when he had that press release. And, you know, you're going to a, a community center in Chanhassen and they're like, wait, what? Only $40 million in local projects and they're asking for fifteen. And I'm like, eh. Um, so... I think local projects are extremely important in this in this bonding bill, especially when it comes to their roads and bridges, and so many of our communities need clean water. Senator Housie, I have a question from Caroline with CCO. She wants you to explain um, how the technical errors prevent the cities and counties from getting the bonding money from last year. Um, Thank you. It is. It actually was in the language, and I even have one of them in my district that uh, I'm having a meeting with MMB because we have a deadline at the end of this week, Senator Pappas told us, that she wants everybody's clarifications in the language. And so I'm not sure what it is that MMB doesn't like about the language for my project in my city, but they cannot get the money out. So I don't know if it's if it, who it was being passed through, if it was the city or the county or the township, but just the language in each one of these. And, and Senator Weber came to me uh, with one of his. And Senator Pappas says she has about a dozen of them, too, that the language just needs to be fixed, according to MMB. We have precinct boxes to get through, so yeah. <laughs> um, do you think Senator Rasmussen will try to do any marijuana bill fixes or anyone else in caucus? Sure. No, and, and I know there's a, a number of issues within that as well. And, and Senator uh, Rasmussen was very influential within that, uh, trying to get some fixes last year. Um, so he's always interested in working uh, on trying to find some fixes. But presently, uh, I don't know or am not aware of, of any conversations there at this point. Senator Johnson, you're in the minority, albeit narrowly, but what's your strategy then for getting some of these things uh, enacted? Is it going to be floor amendments, amendments in committee? Yeah, I, I, last year we saw just a complete breakdown in the process here at the Senate where uh, not only us as members were basically locked out of the room, but also stakeholders, constituents, those who have an interest in, in what's going on. Uh, and, you know, it's maybe easier to do when you have $17.5 billion. Uh, things can get, get done within your caucus. But... Now, since they've spent the $17.5 billion, uh, raised taxes, but they're still looking at a budget deficit going forward, uh, they're going to need a lot more bipartisan uh, work on these things, uh, on these issues. Uh, it would be tough for them to hold together as a caucus in, in light of the good suggestions that our members are bringing. We represent over half or right around half the state, uh, and so it's time that that half starts getting listened to, and I think that pressure is starting to be applied within uh, that side. So I'm hoping for a lot better communications this year, uh, working together in a bipartisan way, which will also help, you know, quite frankly, on the floor as well. Because sometimes, uh, last year, I know many of you were there late at night, uh, you know, watching and reporting on that as well. But when you aren't able to go into the committee and, and get amendments on, when you're not able to have those conversations behind closed doors, then uh, we're going to bring that up in, in uh, 
session and then we're going to have some long debates. So I think our floor time is going to be a real indicator of how well things are going uh, behind the scenes and in committees. Meaning the longer you're on the floor, the and more the, you're at your... The more we've been cut out of the conversation in every other uh, step along the way. Is bonding a leverage piece, again, to get maybe some of this stuff across the finish line? I think, I think it, it's still politics, so we'll use every tool that we have to get some of our repairs done in this state. On the school resource officer issue, uh, I saw that it, the last vote in the House was unanimous, so I think changes have been made, and I don't know how much you're following that, Senator Duckworth, but could you comment? Sure. I'm not following it at all. No. <laughs> uh, you can make a call. There we go. Yeah, I might need to. Uh, well, in all seriousness, I actually I did make those calls last night because I knew we were going to be visiting with you all today. And um, uh, it's interesting. Uh, we kind of saw in the news that uh, Republicans and Democrats had reached some sort of consensus on the SRO bill. Um, but I think everybody forgets we have a bicameral legislature. It's great that the House has done a lot of work and made some improvements to the initial bill that was uh, delivered there. However, I don't think anybody would, would tell you, certainly law enforcement, and I don't think schools would tell you we have 100% consensus on that is the bill that's going to fix the problem. And so I applaud uh, Representative Jeff Witte. He happens to be my actual representative. He's done a great work, former Burnsville police officer, former school resource officer himself. He has made great improvements to that bill in working across the aisle. But there's still a version in the Senate that has to uh, make its way th all the way through the committee process and ultimately to the floor. So I think there's still room for improvement. Uh, it's great that we're moving in the direction of finding a fix or a solution, but I don't think we're all the way across the finish line yet. And my hope is uh, that Republicans in the Senate will be embraced uh, by our colleagues across the aisle, just like Republicans in the House were, and we can create a better version of this bill, which will bring, a, bring about the best solution possible for the safety of our kids, teachers, and schools. So stay tuned. We're still working on it. Senator Rarick, I wonder if you can point to some of the mandates in the education bill that are particularly uh, problematic for you, if you had to pick a few of them that you'd really like to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, find my list. Um, we have a... We did compile. I know a lot of people question and ask, you know, really... Um, you know, I do have a three-page list um, of mandates uh, that our school boards uh, came to us. Um, you know, some of, I can just uh, give some highlights on some, but you know, some of the discipline in, in classroom order was um, an issue, uh, not allowing uh, K through three students to be dismissed. Um, you know, that was one that, uh, in talking with uh, one of my uh, principals uh, in the Mora School District, you know, their issue there was a lot of times that's not necessarily a discipline issue, even as much as the school and the teachers need time to figure out how are we going to handle um, the situation? What can we change? And now they don't have that ability. Now they're at you know, working overtime in the evening trying to put that plan in place, um, which is an additional cost for them. Um, Again, a lot of the uh, curriculum um, that was added, um, anywhere from you know things related to world's be uh, best workforce, um, ethnic studies, uh, Holocaust um, issues, and then um, different uh, trainings um, that have to go out. And the, their big concern is the timeline that was put on it. Um, it's not necessarily that they're opposed to doing any of these things, but the timeline was so quick and so they have so many things that they're trying to work on all at the same time. Once again, it, it's eating up a bunch of time and having to go um, extra hours. Um, and that, again, is eating into that $2.2 .2 billion that we put out there. Um, and then when we look at the um, Universal Meals uh, program, the Earn Sick and Safe time, um, a bunch of those things, they just erode away at what they really wanted, you know, I, most of my superintendents and school boards wanted to give teachers raises. And in the end, um, what they're left with, they just can't give the raises that they had really hoped for that would come. And so when you looked at our plan last year where we focused on the five and five on the formula and ending the special education cross subsidy, um, that would have really given those school districts that ability to do what their district most needed instead of all creating a bunch of new work to create new curriculum, create new plans, um, and dictate where that money would go rather than giving them the flexibility. 
but I can make this list available too if you, you're interested. Archer. Oh, yeah. Where's the stool?